Hi, I'm Doug Fisher, Editor-in-Chief of Ring Magazine, and I'm with lightweight prospect Ruben Ace Torres. Uh, Ruben, you're one of the prized pupils of uh, Thompson Boxing Promotions, and you've got a, a big opportunity coming up in just a few weeks. You're fighting on the undercard of the Regis Pro Gray Jose Cepeda pay-per-view uh, event in Carson, California. You're going to be fighting outside. It might be kind of crisp, but uh, you're going to be fighting in front of uh, the true hardcore boxing fans. Uh, before we get into that, though, we're at your home gym. We're here in Santa Fe Springs. You started boxing here probably before the age of 10. Can you tell us a little bit about your, uh, your amateur roots and, and starting here at this gym? Uh, yeah, well, like you said, I was, uh, when I started boxing, I was like about to be nine, eight or something like that. Um, it was in Pico Rivera at uh, Rivera Park. They had a boxing gym. I don't think it's up anymore, but um, I spent like two weeks there with um, Javier Gomez, who was also still in my corner. Um, they shut the gym down. Um, after that, it was like a group of us, it was like 15, 16 of us that all came um, here. And that's when I met Danny. Um, it was packed already, so you could just feel like one gym going to another gym and like everybody emerging. Um, and at this time, Danny, he's got a, a world-class fighter in Yanni Perez. Yeah, a I, champion I didn't even at know. Bantamweight. I didn't even know who, who Danny was or what. Like I said, I had just started boxing, so. Did you click right away or did it take some time? Uh, it took some time, yeah, because like I said, I had just started and then um, I trained for about a year until I had my first fight. So it, it was uh, a lot of work, mostly with Javi at the, at the time and then. And so, you know, little by little, um, I just started getting better. Uh, what kept you coming back? You're training for a whole year before you have your first amateur fight. What was it about training at this gym or boxing in general that keeps you coming back as a kid? I have no idea. Um, I, I guess it's a combination of both, like having the, the folks, you know, pushing me like, hey, they maybe saw something or maybe I have no idea, but um, I did though. Did you feel it yourself? Did you feel like, oh, you know, I've kind of got like a natural ability or? or I did, grew up. Did you know um, right away that you were good or did, it, did that not, take some time? It, 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 at first, I lost my first fight, by the way. So, okay. uh, I mean, that was kind of like, I don't know, it just always had a chip on my shoulder, you know? Uh, I'm the youngest sibling. And, okay. and so I feel like that kind of feeds into it a little bit. Younger, um, younger brothers are scrappy. I don't know why. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I think that kind of, um, just wanting to be able to like, you know, protect myself and stuff like that. That was uh, back in my mind probably. But I mean, all I, would, all I could think about was just, man, it's just pretty fun, you know? Was, you get to get in the ring and it kind of hurts, but it, it's worth it because you get to put a being on somebody else. So um, I think just, me, just the know, fighting aspect was, was part of the That tells me you're a natural boxer because a lot of kids want to box or they think they want to box. And that first sparring session when they get a, a bloody nose or a bruised eye, well, they don't come back. Or they make it all the way to that first amateur bout, and if they lose, then they quit. Like, ah, uh, nah, I don't want to do it no more. Nah, so it was something in that. you, even though that. the sparring sessions could get rough, mm -hmm. even though you lose your, your first amateur bout, you come back. You got to eat your get back. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so it might go bad for you one day, but hey, I'm going to see you tomorrow, and I'm going to see you the day after. So, I mean, it's, it's fun. I enjoy it. How many amateur fights did you have in all? Uh, I would say like a cool 70, 80 around there. Um, I, I lost a good amount, probably around like 15, 20. Lost and the rest won. Some but, stoppages. But. but you showed ability and, you know, at least towards the end of, of your, your amateur career, you're sparring with professionals. Professionals are using you to get ready for major fights, even title fights. So you know you've got that potential. You know pro. what? Like that, that kind of le like leads into. Um, I actually stopped boxing for a while. Uh, so I think like once you get older, especially in your teens, you start thinking like you know it all. You know this like the. Um, so you're not really looking at like oh I'm sparring with pros like I really have a chance or at least I never really thought like that. It was more so like I was kind of doing it um, just out of routine in a way. Like it's not it's not really for me. It's not is this what I want to do? Ah, it's whatever. Um, so that kind of like led me to like try to go down my own path, like get a regular job or uh, go to school or something like that. You chose school. Uh, yeah, I did. I did. Were you a good student in high school? 
So so. Good enough. Mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I graduated. So okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, for like, um, after high school was kind of like a, a wake up call, you know. It's like, damn, it's real out here. So um, I started noticing, um, like, while I'm in school, I'm over here broke and you know trying to. Trying to pass class and all this. And Where, where'd you go to college? Uh, San Francisco State. So what was that experience like? You're leaving Southern California, you're going to the Bay Area. It's mm -hmm. different. Yeah, it's different I, I, there. I mean, uh, it depends. But me, I, I'm more of like a um, family person. Uh, the warmth, the the beast, and all that. So which they do got over there, but it rains a lot over there it's and colder. stuff. So yeah. I think that that kind of like just. Um, really showed me like who I was, you know? So I was like, nah, I'm not gonna do this school stuff. Um, came back home uh, after I finished my first first year. Uh, so I did two semesters, whatever. Um, started boxing again, uh, went to a few tournaments. I made it to the Golden Gloves Nationals. Um, and I was like, after taking almost three years off. So right. that kind of like put things into perspective for me like, all right, now, now I'm starting, like how you were saying, how you yeah. just want to go pros and you're thinking like, oh, this may, may be for me. I mean, I was doing, I was doing okay, you know? It sounds to me like the break was good for you. It was good to take a break, not, ne not necessarily physically speaking, but just for your mind to, yeah. to know what you wanted to do. Kind of wait, yeah, like I said, it was a wake up call. So, um, I mean, now we're here about to, you know, um, get on a first big event. Um, I'm supposed to be here though, you know, I'm supposed to do this and that's really how I feel, so. I've watched you work your way up from four rounders to six rounders to eight rounders to like the, the co-featured bout of the Thompson Boxing promotion to the main event. And you've headlined uh, a, a couple main events. This last one, this past August in Corona, California, it was a tough fight. You were in with a, a not just a dangerous puncher from Venezuela, but a guy who's a, a lefty and uh, kind of a, an awkward style, but this dude really came to win. It was like kill or be killed for this dude. And um, you guys took turns hurting each other, wobbling each other. Uh, there was some flash knockdowns there, but talk to us about that ending because it was, it was like a bolt out of nowhere. Nobody saw it coming, especially Christian Baez. But it was like explosive. Yeah. We're all jumping out, like the commentators, we're jumping out of our seats, like what the heck did we just witness? And um, it kind of went viral. And, but it's also sort of like in terms of social media, it, people's reaction to it, there's positive and there's negative. It's kind of polarizing. So it's all, it's about all that. positive, man. <laughs> it's uh, all positive so, for you. <laughs> so it's just wild the way it works because like if you think about it, that, or in reality, that was my 19th fight. Right. So, in my head, I'm like, I'm already, I should be going viral just off of what I've been doing before, you know? True. So it's just crazy to me that it took for me to do something like that to get people's attention, you know? because it was, it was quasi-controversial. Yeah, no. You actually didn't break the rules, you know? You were just being a fighter in there, but it was, uh, it was so unexpected. It was such a short little left hook, turned his lights out. It's his fault. You gotta protect yourself at all times. You gotta be focused in there. When the referee says, hey. And he had been said, he had yeah. been done this, like, fight. Right. It's like 15, 10 seconds, 15 seconds. Like, are you just going to, like, still sit there? Like, he I'm was still complaining fight. about that knockdown. Yeah. He didn't like yeah. the knockdown, which is, like, bro. Yeah. So I think the only way, the only thing that I, that I would say that I messed up and that I regret doing was giving him the dap. <laughs> That's, but if I just go straight into it and drop, I hit him. It, 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 all is all is well, you know. So I mean, I don't regret it. He's right. like had him bite his ear off, you know, or something like that. Yeah. It, it, it was a tough fight. I haven't thought about that way. The dap was like, okay, like you, 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 you lured him in. <laughs> hey, we're friends. No, we're not. Yeah. I'm thinking that he's gonna fall off of that hit, off of a punch. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So I mean, it's fifty-fifty. Depends who you ask. You know, I've had a lot of. I, trust me, I heard it already. Like. Uh, to, to this day, I'm still getting comments and really? people telling me stuff like, "Oh, I don't know, like, you're, um, th that was a that was a snake move and this and that." But I mean, it's boxing, and yes. like I said before, the number one rules protect yourself at all times.
All right, let's check it out, Ruben. I was doing a lot of complaining to referee Thomas Taylor. So I just don't get what do you like? What was I supposed to do in that situation? Okay, I dab you up, but then it's like it's time to go, and he's still like just lounging around. We have three more rounds to go in a fight that I feel like is close, you know. Close. So I'm not wasting no no minutes in there. I'm gonna let you rest for what? It was tit for tat, and I agree. I think the fact that you gave him dab like that that's part of the controversy. Yeah. Cause like it's when you kind of seems sneaky, but yeah. it, that, that's like a that's in the like, gym. That's in the yeah, gym. This, right. this is a fight. Yeah. If I'm sparring with you, I'm not gonna shake a hand and hit you. Yeah. And, and I'm kind of paranoid now because like in, in, I said, protect yourself at all times. Like yeah. I, I did that, you know. So right. now in the gym, like every time I dab somebody up, I, I, I'm already ready to go because <laughs> I gotta right live. I gotta, I gotta live what I said, you know. So you know what I think part of it was was. Um, the way he stiffened up and fell backwards. No, but it looked like like slow motion. Yeah. It was super dramatic, but in real time, the punch was fast. His reaction was immediate, but the fall was so dramatic. I forgot. It was like Tim out of a cartoon. Yeah, it was Tim Burr. Yeah. So that's but that's part of the reason it went viral. Um, personally, I was happy for you. I didn't think he was gonna get like yeah. like I said. I didn't think he was gonna go to sleep like that. Yeah. Um, it but didn't I'll, feel like that hard of a punch to you. But I'll do it again. <laughs> well, you have the right. Well, you have the right mentality. And prior to that, though, it was your toughest fight yes, in some regards, physically speaking, because this dude was tricky. I think he was deceptively fast. He was tough. Yeah, he was and, tough, and, and he was really strong. You got buzzed, or stunned a couple yeah, times, maybe um, early. It, it took me a while, honestly. Um, I, I was hurt in the first round. He caught me with a, a clean shot. And I think um, just trying to get my, my feet back under me because it was like, it was a, a minute. I had to hold on. And once I fell into the ropes, I, I, I grabbed him. Good instance, and then, uh, thank you. And then um, going back into the corner, like I watched the fight over and over again. And I see myself kind of falling into the ropes. And I remember that, like walking back. So I'm still not well. And then um, the fight just, the fight was going fast after that. So I kind of feel like I was um, more so internally fighting at the same time, somebody's like try, trying to kill me. It was do or die for this, for this guy, yeah. It was. For me as well, which is why I had to do something like that, you know? So, <laughs> I mean, like you said, um, for them, it, it's it's um, it's win or, or go home and, and that's, there's your opportunity. But for me, it, I feel it's the same way. I only get one shot at this. You created so much momentum. You've been winning, obviously, you're undefeated, but you've been looking good. And you were looking good against increasingly better opposition, more experienced guys, stronger guys, um, boxers, you know, fellow prospects, veterans, gatekeepers, that type, that sort of thing. You don't want a setback because you're so close. Yeah. Uh, I'm closer to my goal now than I've ever been. And I'm coming for, for that spot. Like I put in so much work. For what? For to just turn around and be like, oh, all right, well, I guess I'm just gonna take it. It's because I want to be friendly. Nah, we're not friends in in the ring, you know. So that's the right mentality. Now, November 26, you're on the undercard, Pro Gray Zapata. It's a big pay per view. These guys are top junior welterweights. You know, the winner's gonna get a crack at like the undisputed title. You know, you're right. They're the big dogs. You're on their undercard. You you want to be where where they're at. Um, Talk to us a little bit about the stakes of, of this matchup and, and who you're fighting, this tough guy from Uruguay. Um, my opponent is Eduardo Estela. Uh, shout out to Thompson and Marv Nation for you know collaborating and putting me on that card. It's good to see promoters like, working together. Like you said, um, it's, it's, it's a great card uh, to be on um, at the war grounds. Uh, a, lot, a lot of bad fights gone, gone there's on great, there. There's great history in Carson, California. So, um, like I said, I, I'm supposed to be here. I'm supposed to be doing these things. Like this is just part of the journey to get to, you know, my goals um, to complete my my legacy. At, at the end of the day, I hate to use that word. It kind of sounds corny, but um, it, it, it is what it is. Um, I know that my opponent um, is he's hungry. Have um, you been able to check him out? Yeah, I, I watched film on him before. Um, 
what's his what's his fighting style like? What can we expect from him? He's rugged, but he has skills and he's fast. He has quick hands. Um, he looks pretty solid. He he likes to throw in in flurries, like five six punches. Um, he uh, slick on the defensive. So, um, but I see uh, a lot of uh, openings. He has a lot of openings. I mean, he's thirteen and one. You know, he doesn't have that much experience. Um, I believe. Uh, he has a pretty good amateur record uh, out there in Uruguay. I'm not sure how much the competition or how good the competition is, but it's still, it's, um, it's experience. Yeah, so uh, uh, so you can't you can't just look at his record and say, well, he only has 14 fights. No, you got to take that into not, consideration. No, he's tough, and he's on a little win streak. He has like four. I think he lost that one um, to uh, another Mexican fighter. I think it was at 130 though, um, Lara. Um, after that, he got on a little win streak, which he's currently on. So I know. Like, like, like we said before, it's do or die for him too. I think it's his first time fighting in, this, in California or United States, but I mean, come that night, I got I got a lot of uh, stepping up to do, you know? It's better up. To, you have to expect the best version. It's better up, fighter. yes sir, yeah, so. How would you describe your style for people who haven't seen you? I like to fight, um, obviously behind the jab, um, I think I'm leaning, I'm more of a defensive fighter, so like counter puncher type. Um, but I like to think of myself as versatile, you know, so I, I could box, I could brawl. Um, that's what I like about you. Entertaining, entertaining. No, that's, you know, that's what I like about you, because you're, you're nearly six feet tall, if not six feet tall. So you've got the height, you've got the reach, you've got um, undeniable physical tools, especially for a lightweight. I, I think you could fight comfortably at junior welterweight. You can make lightweight, so you're you're dangerous. You have the punching power, got fast hands. You could play it safe. You could just be a stick and move specialist. You could just keep everybody at the end of your jab and and and, and look to Tommy Hearns and just drop that straight right hand. But you're comfortable fighting on the inside. You're comfortable stalking your opponent. You're comfortable luring traps, backing to the ropes. So I do. I see that versatility, um, regardless of the style. One thing I always note about you is your eyes are like this big, man. Your eyes, your eyes are like silver dollars, wide open. You're looking at your opponent. You're watching everything. And it makes me think, this is a guy who does his homework. This is somebody who's, who's uh, even, if, even if you didn't get a chance to, to watch them fight, because there's not always video on everybody, but even if you didn't get a chance to watch them coming into the fight, you'll use the first couple of rounds to figure out that style, and then you figure out ways to break them down. It doesn't take you too long either. I didn't used to like watching film because um, I forgot where I heard, but it makes sense that if you watch an old fight, say you watch one of my fights, um, you prepare for every fight differently. Right. So I didn't like to watch film because I would think that uh, their tendencies or, or whatever they were trying to do in that fight, it might not be the same for, for my fight, but right. at the end of the day, um, people have patterns, you know? So True. there's punches that when you get uncomfortable, you like to throw. Um, when you start off, you like to start off with a certain punch or a certain combo at a time. So um, just growing the sport, um, you, 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 I feel like it's it's, uh, it's mandatory, you know? You, you have to do your homework. So this will be your last fight of 2022. Um, Obviously, we think you're going to win. <laughs> but it's not just about winning. It's how you win, right? So you want to make a statement. Um, you make that statement. Let's just talk a little bit about 2023. What are your goals? My goals for 2023, I have to get into top 10 if I want to uh, get a chance to fight for a world title. I know you're looking um, at the, the rankings, right? Uh, you know, when you're ranking like the them, WBA, the WBC, the yeah, WBC. I think for the because I have a little regional title, USNBC, right. WBC, so that got me finally like on the website. You gotta look. Well, my name's all the way at the bottom, so <laughs> I mean, I, I'm not really trying to pay attention to that right now. Like, I, like I said, I'm not overlooking my next fight. Um, That's right. Uh, but for next year, for sure, um, fight some ex world champions or, or even uh, another uh, contender. That's go, uh, that's you know trying to get up there. Um, and just right, continue. once you're ranked, you can look to see who's ranked ahead of you, and you can say, hey, yeah, yeah, so we can get yeah, that guy yeah. in the ring. Most definitely. Yeah. Um, and that's all it is. Just keep winning, man, and stick to the game plan, and then 
Um, we'll, we'll see where the rest goes and talk to the team and see what they want to do. But I'm going to be a world champion, so just take all the steps forward. But starting with uh, this next fight. Well, you got the right mindset, definitely. Obviously, you've got the tools, you've got the talent. You're getting the experience right now. Yeah. We look forward to watching you really evolve from a, a hot prospect into a legitimate world-class contender. Appreciate it, man. Thank you.